so uh, i was just thinking of creative title for uh, the talk and uh, i didn't want it to be like technical documentation and all that and something boring uh, so I, i went with uh, zen type so, so something like jutsu or do and all that i hope uh, you know what jutsu is means a technique uh, do means a way of uh, the way you know so anyway i thought this was a clicker anyway uh, so what's the what's the function of a good documentation so basically it means it has uh, uh, rapid community growth and it helps in bug fixes you know it uh, avoids trivial bug reports as good section of documentation and based on that they grew with more and more contributors and you know uh, projects like docker or go for it. uh ad hoc documentation can be like this you know it's total mess you know it can repel users and community lead, it can lead to spurious bug reports it can growth of the project and lead to a lesser code as well so you know even the developers can be say documentation here it need not be a uh, what you see on the web page or pdf it can also be a comment anyway so these are some of the projects i just listed which i thought had uh, have uh, some really good documentation uh redis i found to be quite excellent and they uh, place a great deal of stress on can you um put it on to some but if you move it it um it cuts out so oh okay. just need to clip it right clip it, otherwise it's just going to carry on yeah but don't fiddle with it <laughs> okay um uh, anyway you know this also needs a better documentation <laughs> anyway so uh, so where was i yeah so this is some of projects which i thought have good documentation and which uh, uh, inspired me uh, as well uh, redis or uh, go go has some really nice ones you know uh, for beginners you know the function of a documentation shouldn't just cater to a beginner but also even to a experienced uh, a uh, power user as well you know you never know uh, i mean it should cater to the whole spectrum and docker of course you know uh, this grew to everywhere in no time uh, oh yeah one of the functions of the documentation what is it keep it fresh don't make your documentation go stale you know uh, important what, what how can you achieve this some of the ways are as i've listed here are uh, keep the documentation version control you know uh either in the same code tree as the, the as the code or uh, as a sub su- uh, jit sub module or anything like that and uh, and make sure that your documentation is in unison with what is there in the code you know don't make uh, you know, either one of them go ahead uh, perl lock is one of the ways in which uh, you know the uh, the the documentation is in the same uh, body as the code itself so it, so that it does not uh, go uh, stale and one more thing is the timeline so what happens is there are several versions of a project and uh, when you are uh, reviewing the documentation you don't know whether it's for the latest head of the project or the the latest release or the latest beta or the latest alpha so having a, a versioned timeline for a docu- for the documentation of a project is also very helpful and it can uh, avoid a lot of ambiguity uh okay and this is about the management uh, how how do you manage there are many projects which keep their documentation in uh, continuous integration as as the code itself and uh, and the documentation testing you know that is something that uh, not many do but uh, that also helps here and uh, and uh, getting the feedback from the user continuous feedback uh, i've seen some projects doing that like coroyos and all that you know where they have a box in the end asking uh, you know what can we do to improve and stuff like that the user feedback actually bug reporting for documentation is another thing which is very helpful and which uh, uh and uh, the reporting with context you know uh, there are many projects which allow that i think uh, dokuwiki and twiki and all that those those allow that but also yeah and this is about the formats so what format should you use and uh, and and the question is which is better there's the because some of the which is better is not a good question because uh, in many cases you need more than one of these 
for instance, uh, for first two are the formats I've listed, but uh, what about using a wiki for your documentation? You know, something which allows uh, you to put the documentation out there, but also allows you know, people to edit continuously. Because uh, the problem with documentation is uh, you don't have the perspective of the end user who uses it uh, as a developer often. So ha having it in a wiki format can uh, allow for better edits and uh, for less steep learning curve. And uh, also having it in man tech and info formats are better when a person is using it for troubleshooting or on a server and stuff like that. Anyway, these are some of the tools I've listed that uh, I found uh, very uh, helpful. And uh, the one I use uh, is Sphinx. We use is Sphinx. But again, uh, some like uh, Haddock for uh, Haskell and Perldoc, CPAN and Pandoc, which is very helpful for converting between the formats. And of course, Sphinx uh, for, uh, for the documentation, and which is used again by projects like Python and all of them. And Oxygen for generating code documentation from the comments. Anyway, so uh, this is another thing that I uh, think uh, I thought I would stress uh, uh, in, the, in the documentation is, is that attribution. You know, uh, there is a lot of attribution uh, for uh, code, but there is not much for documentation, which uh, discourages people from commenting more and more documentation. So that's something. Uh, unlike code, it's not much uh, formal, but it's very important to. Oops. Oh, okay. Just a second. You know when? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's but it's very important to the project. Uh, it also provides an added in incentive for people to uh, contribute to the uh, contribute the documentation and uh, and since it is of high importance to the if if uh, project leader uh, attributes a high importance to the documentation contribution, it means. Uh, more people will contribute. You know, one of the issues that many projects face is that uh, uh, there are people willing to contribute, but uh, most most of them may not be willing to contribute in terms of code, but in other ways, such as documentation. So uh, that helps uh, attributing uh, to the attributing to whoever contributed it. And uh, and. Yeah, so this is another thing, uh, you know, for many of the commands and things like that, people find that the documentation is quite mechanical, you know, something like man page, vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, something like a blog post detailing something, you know, that is another thing that needs to be uh, checked. Uh, the blog posts, uh, they speak directly to the reader, and they are less mechanical, and they are more how-to based, you know, how to do stuff like that, and... So that is something that uh, can be integrated into the formal documentation itself. Okay, this is a, some, so something what I call as a normalization, uh, but this is a yeah, normalization in the database parlance. So what is this normalization? You know, I've seen like documentation where you have like a, a, a two, three paragraphs, but with links uh, branching out to several different parts. So that when a user uh, approaches a particular topic, you know, something, say, uh, Redis uh, cluster, uh, and, but then he has to jump to, like, several uh, links to understand but that some of them points to different links, and then he has to collate them, all of them, and read, 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 it, at, read it as one. So that's what I call it as a denormalized uh, Sorry, normalized documentation. That is, it points to several places, as in like uh, normalized tables, uh, database normalization, you know, all that. But whereas a denormalized is one wherein, you know, instead of uh, pointing, you, you, you know, you duplicate it. But uh, there are problems with that in that it, it creates, uh, again, staleness if you forget to update in multiple places. And maintenance can be hard. But again, there are some documentation uh, engines which for, uh, allow for embedding of uh, the documentation so that, you know, you maintain one copy, but it's embedded in multiple places. Like RST, for instance, allows that. So, uh, so that way, uh, the user need not jump to multiple places, but at the same time, he can, you know, read, read it as a whole. But again, uh, having uh, completely denormalized is also not that good in that uh, a uh, big chunk of monolithic documentation can be a turnoff for people who are uh, interested in specific parts of it. Uh, so this brings to me, me to the dialectics uh, of it. Uh, so uh, so or what, what we call as a FAQ. You know, uh, there are many projects uh, for which when I started, I directly jumped to the FAQ. You know, because 
the human way of thinking is through questions. You know, how, why, what, uh, where, and stuff like that. And this is something that also helps us in uh, troubleshooting and for beginners. You know, that's, that's how we humans uh, think. Uh, that's how our flow of thinking is. It's through asking questions, you know. So uh, this, is, this is also the, what you call is learning the hard way. You know, there are, okay, what happened now? Okay. Uh, so this is what, what I call is learning the hard way. Uh, I'm sure you have uh, seen those books, uh, Learn Python the Hard Way, or those, like, those books wherein, you know, you are made to uh, do some tasks and then, uh, you know, th through by asking questions and stuff like that, rather than giving you the answers. So that's the di dialectical approach. And uh, th that approach, uh, while uh, this can exist in parallel to the existing formalized documentation, in that, you know, you, you have a, uh, common questions that someone who is beginning, uh, who is a beginner to the uh, project can ask and, you know, you can uh, have the answers which in turn point to the formal documentation. You know, that, that reduces the load, the mental load for a beginner and, uh, you know, eases the learning curve. Uh, and this is again uh, learning from patterns. Uh, this is something what I, I usually um, say that humans are better at learning from examples like machines are better at learning from algorithm. You know, the reverse is what we, what we refer to as pattern recognition and machine learning because where, you know, it learns from patterns. That's how we humans are. Uh, but what we often see is that uh, some documentations, uh, something like man pages, though now that is changing, uh, uh, lack examples, you know. Uh, and I recently saw a Q&A on some Reddit post where, uh, people, where there were links for every command with uh, examples. So having examples, having examples helps, uh, always helps, and, uh, and it always helps uh, well, for anyone who wants to try out a different, who wants to try out different ways in which they can use a particular command or a particular project or stuff like that. And, but it, you should make sure, make sure that, uh, how, it, how much it covers the project and such things. It also helps in quick testing, yeah, as I said. So the examples are very important. Uh, it also encourages uh, the user of the documentation to actually try it at the same time he's reading it, you know, because that uh, helps in better retention. Uh, okay, so who are all the consumers of the documentation? This is something that uh, uh, a documentation writer or a project lead needs to take into consideration. So you have the end user uh, uh, who, for whom you need to stress on uh, simplicity and uh, for whom you need to check on the, the assumptions that he makes and his prior knowledge and stuff like that or whatever he needs to know before that. And then there is a developer and uh, for him the document is like the co code comments and uh, design documents and stuff like that. Because uh, the, as the project grows you have more and more new developers joining and uh, for them, having a good uh, code, uh, code co comments is very, very vital. And then there are architects and DevOps and all of that. For DevOps, it, uh, it helps with the reference, uh, code ref uh, command references. And the troubleshooting part is what I refer to as a, a, a FAQ-based uh, documentation. You know, uh, that helps when you're troubleshooting. How do I do this? How do I do that? Why did it this fail? You know, stuff like that. So I'm done. So this further, I couldn't add more links, but these have a. I, I, I like the site Read the Docs since it uh, collects documentation from several projects and you know has some nice maintenance and uh, integration with GitHub and stuff like that. Okay, that's uh, about it. Uh, I'm the product lead for Percona XDB cluster at Percona, but I also write uh, uh, documentation and keep uh, keep <laughs> care of the documentation for that project. And this is the image grades. Thank you.